Dr. Rajesh Yadav from Department of Biochemistry, Galkutia University. So today we will discuss about the topic memory. So if we discuss about the learning, the ability to alter behavior on the basis of experience is called learning. And if we talk about the memory, it is the acquisition, storage and retrieval of sensory information ability to recall past events at the conscious and unconscious level. Now type of the memory. So it can be divided into two types. First physio physiologically on basis of how information is stored and recalled. It is of two type implicit and explicit memory. Second depending upon permanency of storage. So it is depend it is of three types short term memory, intermediate and long term. So first we will discuss about type of the memory. Uh, first is a declarative memory. It is also called explicit memory. And second is a non-declarative memory or implicit memory. So if we discuss about that declarative memory, it is also of two types. One is a semantic memory and second is a episodic memory. Semantic memory include recognize the person, place, code, phone numbers. So these are included in the semantic memory. While if you talk about the episodic memory, we have to learn an incident of the past. That means the past incident is, is included in the episodic memory. So next, we will discuss about uh, detail of the semantic memory. So in the semantic memory included the visual memory, auditory memory or somatosensory memory. So next, we discuss about the non-declarative or implicit memory. So it includes unconscious learning by way of procedural memory or priming phenomena. For example, in the procedure of DNA isolation, that means the procedure of anything that will be included like uh, learning of the vehicle, learning of the car, riding the bicycle. So all the procedure which is included in the phenomena is called uh, implicit memory or non-declarative memory. So it also include motor skills, habits, learning process and rules and how to perform some things. It's all included in the implicit memory. So implicit memory also included like procedural memory like uh, that is a learning of a guitar or something emotional response. The amygdala is responsible for the emotional response for this memory and uh, swimming so it's all included in the implicit memory so memory can be divided into the various types like short term memory it is also called working memory like learn phone number codes places second is the retrospective memory retrospective memories include past memory and prospective memory include future memory so next there are some areas which are responsible for the memory like hippocampus, amygdala, striatum, and mammillary body. So hippocampus is a major area and it is also responsible for the long-term potentiation. That means how the short-term memory is converted into the long-term memory. So if you talk about the memory, the hippocampus is the major area and the main function of the hippocampus is long-term potentiation which was given by the Raman Kahal. So brain is stored memory by altering the strength of the connection between the neurons. So amygdala is also part of memory. So uh, it is one of the two almond shaped group of the nuclei which is located deep and medially within the temporal lobe of the cerebral cortex or brain. So now come to the short term memory. Short term memory allow recall of the period of several seconds to minutes without rehearsal. Short term memory is supported by the transient pattern of the neural communication depend upon the region of the frontal lobe, prefrontal cortex and parietal lobe. Generally three hypotheses was given to explain the short term memory. First is a, it is a caused by the continuous neural activity resulting from the nerve signal that travel around and around a temporary memory trace in the circuit of reverberating neurons. That means there is something pattern which is included in the short term memory. Another hypothesis is given that presynaptic facilitation occurs in the short-term memory. While 
synaptic potentiation is also explained in case of short term memory second is the intermediate memory so in the intermediate memory can be explained by the fact that there is two type of the neuron one is a facilitator neuron and second is sensory neurons so these facilitator neurons secrete neurotransmitter that is called serotonin and this serotonin act as a receptor for these sensory neurons so the receptor activate adenylase cyclase enzyme in the sensory neurons and adenylate cyclase convert atp into the cyclic amp so as the result cyclic amp formation occur cyclic amp activate protein kinase enzyme protein kinase generally enzyme is responsible for the phosphorylation so protein kinase enzyme phosphorylate the protein of potassium ion as the result potassium ion channel become closed and not allow potassium ion outside the result as a result action potential remain constant in neuron because of, of repolarization or hyperpolarization the blockage can be last for minutes to several weeks and this prolonged action potential cause prolonged activation of calcium ion and this large quantity of calcium ion will enter into the sensory neuron as the result of calcium ion entry increase neurotransmitter and greatly facilitate the synaptic transmission so this is the process of intermediate memory next is a long term memory so long term memory uh, actual structural changes instead of the chemical changes because some structural changes occur in the long term memory it has been observed like increase vesicle release in the neurons or increase large number of neurotransmitter release increase presynaptic terminals and the change in the structure of the dendritic spines so these are changes which has been observed in the long term memory now this is the hippocampus area where uh, we are showing the path of the memory like there is a para hippocampal cortex and the information goes into the entorhinal cortex and through the entorhinal cortex it goes to the dentate gyrus and from the dentate gyrus it goes into the hippocampal ca3 region by the mossy fiber pathway and from ca3 fiber to ca1 fiber c1 region by shaffer collateral pathway and then it come into the sub subiculum and through the subiculum it goes into the entorhinal cortex and then perirhinal cortex in this way this is the path of the memory in the hippocampus region so the main function of the hippocampus is a long term potentiation it involve protein synthesis growth of the presynaptic and postsynaptic neurons and their connections long term potentiation occurs in many parts of the brain and studies on the synapse of hippocampus connection of the primdel cells in ca3 c1 region by shaffer collateral fiber so this is the mechanism of the long term potentiation there are very steps through long term potentiation occur so this is the figure of the long term potentiation now the applied aspect of the memory some drugs that activate the brain and stimulate act as a stimulator like caffeine amphetamine physostigmine nicotine pimoline and these drugs act on the central nervous system and stimulate the nervous system or brain so the some chemicals which is responsible for the addiction like morphine amphetamine cocaine heroin nicotine and alcohol so all these product produce dopamine produce the dopamine on the limbic system dopamine is a neurotransmitter which is responsible for the pleasure of the moments so it is also uh, secreted by the rewarding area or rewarding hormone so there is a disease of the memory called amnesia so it is of two type one is anterograde and second is retrograde amnesia so if you talk about the anterograde amnesia the ability to establish new long term memories and it is mostly in the lesion involving hippocampus while in case of retrograde amnesia it is a inability to recall past memories amnesia greater for the recent past than remote past 
and in this MDC at the lesson involving temporal lobe of the cerebral cortex. So one of the disease related to the memory is the Alzheimer disease in which the acetyl cholinergic neurons has been destroyed and the deficiency of the acetyl choline neurotransmitter occurs. Mostly it is occurs over the 65 years old people and loss of the postsynaptic neurons occurs. So this disease is also called senile dementia. So this is the figure you can see here that is normal brain and this is the damaged portion of the brain which is caused the Alzheimer disease. So these are characteristic of the Alzheimer's disease like the problem occurs in the language, problem solving, judgment, calculation, attention, psychiatric symptom and loss of the spatial orientation. And this is the left portion of the cerebral hemisphere and right portion of the semi cerebral hemisphere. It is generally known that left portion is command to the right portion like left cerebral hemisphere command the right hands or right legs while the left of by the right of the cerebral hemisphere control the left hand and left legs so this is called dominant left or right dominant hemisphere so concept of the categorical representation of the hemisphere that means the function allotted to the left hemisphere in right handed person and this function allotted to right hemisphere in the right-handed persons. Thank you.